At Evans Bay, Wellington, the flying boat Hythe has just arrived with the first party of British delegates for the Wellington Civil Aviation Conference. Principal delegate aboard the Hythe is Lord Knowles, chairman of the British Overseas Airways Corporation. Australia and Fiji are also sending delegations, for this important conference is to consider how British airlines can best serve the South Pacific. In solving civil aviation problems, the British countries are acting with wartime solidarity. District peat fires have broken out again in the peat swamps. These fires are an annual menace for swampland farmers. And this year, with a rainless summer, they're raging as never before. Trench digging is the only way to stop them, for the peat burns underground. At some places, it comes to the surface to burn rushes, grass, fences, haystacks, houses, and all farm property. As the fires range over thousands of acres in Rukuhir and Piako swamps, smoke pours across the whole Waikato. In the middle of it all, farmers fight on. For them, rain alone can bring relief. A Nelson tour takes this bus past the golden sands of Kaiteriteri Beach. Then to the tobacco fields of Motueka. With peace comes chances of tripping again, of seeing new places and meeting new people. Tobacco harvesting is a novelty for these people. And funny people, they want to know where all the tobacco goes to. Lead us not into temptation, but oh, how I'd like a smoke. Queen Charlotte Sound is on the program too, although not everyone gets a bite. It must be the smell of that tobacco. Onto the hooks and into the boat. Fish for the cooks, oh how they float. In the words of the guidebook, the Queen Charlotte Sound is renowned for its fishing. It's remarkable for the number of its reaches and inlets and the grandeur of its precipitous and forest-clad hills, culminating... Uh-uh. A simple monument, a pick and shovel, today marks Gabriel's Gully in central Otago, honoring the man whose discovery of gold here changed the course of Otago's history and added to the development of New Zealand. The early settlers of Otago sought simple peace and contentment, and they found they'd come to a golden country, a country where today men still search for gold, using the simple methods of men and women who once rushed to Otago in their thousands, seeking gold in the hills and the valleys and along the riverbanks. Men have always been willing to risk their lives and endure hardships for gold. In the Old Man Range is this monument, erected in 1928. Methods of work are still unchanged. Sluicing was brought to the Otago gold fields in the early 60s and is still carried on like this. By using water under pressure, nature has been induced to do both the digging and the washing. Great gaps in the hillsides marked the path of the sluicers. Dredging was the final method evolved, and today one of the largest dredges in the world is slowly eating its way up the Clutha River above Cromwell. Once there were some 50 dredges working on this river. rate of about 25 feet a day, this huge floating structure is typical of the many dredges that have been used to bring up the gold deep in the Clutha. 
The course of the dredge is continually surveyed, and the dredge leaves in its wake piles of tailings on the banks. Operating on electricity, this dredge moves 33,000 tons of shingle in a day. It would take 10,000 prospectors working with pick and shovel to equal it. The foreman at the controls moves the dredge forward and from side to side. Working day and night, it takes five men on each ship to keep the buckets coming up and pouring out the rocks and shingle. From this method of crushing and washing the riverbed came the industry of river dredging that brought men from all over the world to Otago to study and learn. Dredges were once built in Dunedin for export to Russia, Africa and America. On few dredges is the final process of smelting the gold carried out. But here in the gold room, the gold won each week is melted and purified. For New Zealand, gold is still an important industry. It is today seventh among our exports. From this dredge alone comes this much in a week, a thousand pounds worth. Product of an industry that springs from the work of the mining pioneers of the Otago gold field.